We are stopped on the taxiway to do the after landing procedure, but in reality the first officer would do this during the taxi. Check that the speed brakes are down, the flaps are retracted, and that the flap dial is on zero, that the automatic brakes are off. On the overhead panel, switch off the probe heat switches, start the APU, and make sure that the engine start switches are moved from continuous to off. The transponder is moved from TCAS to ALT so that Schiphol's ground radar can pick us up. Now we are going to taxi to the gate. In reality the taxi from runway 18R to the gate takes about 20 minutes. This runway was built for night arrivals with noise abatement in mind. We are going to speed up this 20 minute taxi. You will notice that along the way I switch off the master caution light and this was triggered by the pitot heat switches being switched off and this is normal. Also you will see that first an Airbus 320 and then a Boeing 737 moved in front of me. I had to stop for about 3 minutes before I could turn into the gate. So here we are at the gate and the first thing we're going to do is set the parking brakes. We're going to switch off the engine generators and leave the APU generators on. So at the moment we'll be getting electrical power from the APU. Verify that the engine generator lights are on, the off lights, and that the APU lights are extinguished. We can check on the AC-DC panel that we are actually getting power from the APU. Now I move both engine start selectors to the cutoff position and then verify on the upper engine display unit that both yellow oil pressure lights are on and that the power starts to come down. This should only be done once you have been near idle speed for about three minutes. Turn off the seatbelt signs Set the external lights as needed, but turn off the red anti-collision lights as a signal to ground crew that they can approach the aircraft. Let's turn off the fuel pumps, but we will leave the left forward pump on to supply the APU until we have ground power established. If the wing and engine anti-ice was being used, switch it off now. On the hydraulic panel, switch off the electrical demand switches, but leave the engine demand switches on. Moving over to the aircon panel, leave the recirculation fans on auto. Pack switches stay on auto. Open the isolation cross-feed valve. Switch on the APU bleed switch and you will see that the dual bleed light will come on. Exterior lights are set as needed and both flight director switches are switched off. And this will clear the stored modes in the FMC. We had the transponder set to ALT to show up on ground radar, but now switch it to standby. In the FMC we are now going to FS actions and we're going to set the wheel chocks and we're going to connect the ground power and at this point we'll open the doors for the passengers to disembark. Make sure that the ground power switch is on and the blue ground power lights are also on. Switch off the APU and allow it to power down for two minutes. And now that the chocks are in position, we can release the parking brake. <clears throat> we will switch off the remaining fuel pump and the captain will call for the shutdown checklist, which the first officer will read and both pilots will check. 
This is stuff that all should have been done. The fuel pumps are off, the probe heat switches are off, the hydraulic panel is set, the flaps are up, the parking brake is off, the engine start levers are both in the cutoff position and the weather radar is in the off position. Fifteen minutes later when the passengers are off we will secure the aircraft and get it into a state where it can be serviced. Both IRS mode selectors are turned off, the emergency light switches are turned off, all four window heat switches are put into the off position. On the aircon panel pack switches are put to the off position and the first officer will read the secure checklist. At this point new passengers could get on and we could fly another leg but we are going to do an electrical power down to cold and dark and fly to Innsbruck tomorrow. So all that entails from here is to turn off the ground power or if we were using the APU turn that off and then to turn off the battery switch. As you can see the aircraft is now in the cold and dark state. Tomorrow we will start up and get it ready to fly to Innsbruck. Goodbye and thanks for watching.